we're going to use a couple of the Google tools to show how to make board games that you can do with your students either in person or virtually through Google Meet, shared screens and shared documents or um, Google Suite applications. We're going to use Google Draw and Google Slides and they both have um, some similarities and some differences as we've discussed um, and you'll see some key differences and um, ways you can use them both to get to the same end or means. So Google Drawing we're going to do first. Now I'm going to take my blank canvas and the first thing I'm going to do is insert an image and I have the image of a board game already saved on my computer. So I'm going to upload that image and now that that's on my canvas I'm just going to resize it and move it to the side. So there's my board game. The next thing I want to do on my page is I'm going to start to add some pieces to my board, game pieces. And remember you can insert images from your computer, from the web. Um, I don't have any game pieces on my computer, so I'm going to search the web. I'm just going to type game piece and see what comes up, and I'm going to import a couple into my draw activity. Once it's in there, I can resize it. I'm just going to leave it over here for now, and then let's do let's do that again. We'll see if we can find a different color. And there, that one is now as well. Remember, you're sharing these in edit mode with students. That way, they can manipulate in real time also, so everything is movable on the page. And again, I'm doing this quickly for purposes of this tutorial, but you can modify and change the sizes and formats of things on here if you wanted to. Now, one of the biggest questions I get is how do I incorporate some sort of dice or cards, number cards, in a game using some of the Google tools? Now there's websites you can use that have dice on them. There are extensions or add-ons you can do with dice and things like that. But I kind of like to just use cards and layering cards to get the same effect. So first thing I'm going to do is add some text on here for directions. This says click below and move your card to the pile under the arrow to reveal your number to move. So let me make two piles of cards, and to do that I'm going to use my Shapes tool. I'm going to make one pile there. I'm going to copy that and paste it, and then one pile here. I'm going to make these green. You can do any color you want or play around with the styles of lines and things like that. Then I also want to add my arrow in here shapes again, use a down arrow and just plunk a little down arrow right in there. Okay, so here we go. So, so far we've imported this image. We have our movable pieces and we have our cards. Now, what I want to do up here is I want to have these as my number cards. So if I draw one, that means I move one space on my game board. Um, but how do I do it so it's a little more interactive and clean to use? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a couple number cards just so you can see how to do it. So let's just add a 2 to this. And now I'm going to format it by centering it, making the number a little bigger. I'm going to copy and paste this four times just to show you. Because now I can change the numbers on here. And keep the same formatting. So these are just my how many do I move cards. Okay. I want to stack these now onto my drawing. There's one, two, three, four here. Okay. So the student now can take a card by clicking it and dragging it down here and it reveals what they're going to move next. But in order to achieve a nice effect and not be so confusing on the page, what I want to do is I want to move this box by going to Arrange in Order. I want to bring it to the front. Why do I want to do that? Because now when you drag down, these cards go behind it. Drag down, 
those cards go behind this one so you can clearly see how many spaces that you want to move next. Now one of the drawbacks of the Google Draw is that you can't lock background images onto the page. So there can be a time, because these are in edit mode, again it's not perfect, where the student might click this by mistake and drag it all over the place. Now Dan, one of my amazing IT guys, taught me a cool trick to do this. And what you can do, just as a protection on it, is you can import, or add I should say, a, a shape over your game board. So I'm going to pick a square. I'm going to draw that shape over my game board. Okay, let's do that here. Then we're going to go to Fill and Transparent. What that did was it put a shape over my game board, so if anything by chance accidentally gets moved, it's just the square. It's not the actual game board itself, so it's like a transparent layer of protection on your actual game board because you can't lock it in place. And then you have an activity that you can do with the students. You would share this with anybody with the link in edit mode. That way you can do it on both sides and play an interactive game with your students. Again, to recap, we added the image of the board onto the draw. We added these game pieces from insert image from the web. Then we added squares and directions over here, but we moved this square forward to the front. That way when you drag these numbers down, they go behind the top one and you can see clearly how many numbers that you're supposed to move when it's your turn. Lastly, we added a clear layer over the game board because you can't lock background images in Google Draw. That way if you're sliding stuff and actually slide this by mistake, it's not the actual game board that's moving, it's just the clear protection layer on top of it. Now let's look at the same activity in Google Slides to see some comparisons and contrasting based on what you'd like to do and also what type of students you're working with and the protections or things you want in place. Now that we're in Google Slides, let's make a similar activity in Google Slides and so show some feature matching type things. So now that I'm on my Google Slides, the first thing that I want to do is here's my slide. I'm going to change and go to my page setup and make sure I'm in widescreen to give me the most canvas possible in here to work with. I'm going to change my layout to a blank page. The first thing we want to do, because you can set backgrounds in Google Slides, is we want to make our background. Okay. So the first thing I want to do now is I want to insert my image the same way I did in Google Draw from my computer. Now why am I not inserting that as my background? first you might ask. Well the reason is is because I want to make a space on here for my playing cards and my pieces and my directions. So I don't want to set this as my background yet because it's going to take up too much of my screen. What I'm going to do is move this image a little over and make it a little smaller here. Because I want to make I'm going to make my background image on the slide. Okay. So then what I want to do is add in anything else that I know is not going to be moved on the page. So let me put my directions back here. Again, I'm just doing this quickly. You could play around with all the sizes and styles as you did this. And then I just want to add a space for my cards. So I'm going to maybe put a square here, one here, I'm going to copy that, paste it, one here, I'm going to add my arrow, so now all of this is stuff that I don't want moved in the actual activity, okay? So what I can do now is I can go to this slide and I can download it as an image. Now that I did that, I can get rid of that and add a new slide. And now I can set my background using that image I just made. And unlike in Draw, 
Now this background can't be moved by accident. It's right as my background image right here. So I can't move this by accident. Okay? And now I can simply add the rest of the pieces just like you, we did in the draw. So I can go to insert image. I'm gonna search the web again for game piece. Now I could copy and paste from my Google Draw, but I just want to go through the process again so you see it. There's one piece and I can just repeat that again. Take my green one again. And now I want to make my cards. How do I do that? So again, I can go to my square, can make one here. I'm going to color it green. You could do again whatever you want. I'm going to copy that and paste it here. And again, I do my numbers on these because this is how I'm doing it. This is so I'm going to put a one here or whatever number. Put that in the center and format it a little bit. Then I like to take this entire one and copy and paste it, so I just have to change the number. We'll just do five of them here just for purposes of this tutorial again. It's the same thing we just did in Draw. And I'm just going to stack them on top of each other. This will vary, again, depending on what kind of what you're doing. These could easily be directions and text. I mean, anything can go on these cards. It doesn't have to be numbers, but it could be whatever you're working on. And then remember, the way I like to do it is to set this image on top, so I'll arrange it forward, bring it to the front. That way, when you click and move your card to the pile, they disappear into this pile. It's almost like you're flipping them reverse over, and then you can just see how many you have to move, just like that. Again, you will share these, anybody with the link can edit, so you can both interact on this same game board. So it's very similar to the draw we did. This gives you a larger canvas in a way, um, but you can't lock down these images per se. We added the clear coat on top of this game board, so in case something was moved by accident, it was just a clear piece and not the actual game board. Here we were able to lock down the image and then the boxes where these cards go in the text, so the only thing movable are your pieces and your cards. So it's this, it's the different means to a same end in a way. It goes back to personal preference, also goes back to game type. Um, you're able to set the background here and what type of students you might be working with, um, worrying about different things being moved when you don't want them to be. So again, this was just a quick tutorial to show you how to make a simple board game using Google Draw and Google Slides different means to a same end, all depends on personal preference, but all involves pretty similar steps. Again, this can be used with any type of board game or any game you can think of, and then shared and played virtually or in person, or screen shared over a virtual Google Meet or things like that as well. I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching.